two-point charges of a magnitude of 5.0, uh, oh, nanocoulombs, and negative three nanocoulombs are separated by 35 centimeters. What is the potential difference between a point infinitely far away and a point midway between the charges? Okay, so we have two charges. We have a positive charge right here. We have a negative charge right here. We know there are 35 centimeters between the two, and we're trying to figure out the electric potential difference between a point infinitely far away. Unfortunately, infinitely far away just got a little bit closer, but it's still infinitely far away. That's the joy of infinite. Uh, and the final point, which is located right here, we're looking for the electric potential difference between that point and this point, the point midway between these two charges. General approach. How would you like to solve this problem? Uh, we, can. we have three different equations for electric potential difference. Which one are we going to start? Let's start there. I do understand this is difficult, and I'm going to make this mistake as well, that we have the delta, and we've called that change in all this time, but instead we're going to put difference at the end, which is the same thing, right? Okay. So we could say, you know, change in electric potential, but it's actually technically called electric potential difference. Okay. They mean the same thing. Okay. Um, equals the change in electric potential of the energy electric. Notice, isn't that fun? We have the difference and the change in, in the same equation. Divide by Q. We are actually not going to use this equation. I'll talk about I'll talk about why right now. We don't actually know anything about the change in electric potential energy at the moment. We could at the end use this to figure out the change in electric potential energy. We can't really use it right now. That's okay. Another equation we might use. Propose one. Cosine. Um, the difference in well, the potential energy electric electric potential energy equals K times Q1 times Q2 over R. We could actually use both of these equations in combination to get there, and you'll see why that is, but there's a much easier way to do it. So I'm not going to use those two just yet. I'll talk about hopefully right at the end here how we could use both of these in combination to get there. There is an easier way to do it. What's interesting about this is that I do question number one, it's relatively easy, agree? Question number one is relatively easy. Then we move on to question number two, and for some reason, you guys don't see it. So let me help you. Do you see how similar this question is to the one we did first? It's just instead of having one point charge, we have two. All right. So what equation, then, are we going to use to solve this problem. Mark? It will just be the um, electric, potential, uh, electric potential difference equals um, KQ over R. But the issue is, I agree this is the equation we're going to use, we don't know how to use this with two charges. right? That's where people get confused. So remind me, class, is the electric potential difference a vector or a scalar? Scalar. Therefore, what can we do? Uh, not quite. When it's a scalar, we're going to do if we want to figure it out from both. Sum them. Just add them together. That's what it means to be a scalar. You can ignore the direction. It doesn't have a direction. So the electric potential difference total is going to be the electric potential difference for the first one plus the electric potential difference for the second one. You just Because it's a scalar, all you have to do is add it. So we get KQ1 over R1 plus KQ2 over R2. Uh, help me with all the numbers here, Andrew. Please. Um, I'm sorry, Carlone. Uh, oh, you're, you're Andrew, I forgot. Carlone. Okay. K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Um, Q1 is 5. So we got to convert that. So that should be 5 times 10 to the 9 times 10 to the negative 9. Because a nanocomb is much smaller than a coulomb. And then we'll do this one as well. Negative 3 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. So 5 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by? Um, 35. 
not going to be 35. What is R1, please? Counts. It's going to be half of. Remember, it's the distance between uh, what the center of charge of the charge and whatever point you're talking about, which in this particular case, it's going to be uh, half of the 17, or 35 centimeters. But we do need to convert that over to meters here. So it's going to be 0 0.35 divided by 2. Plus, keep going here. We have 8.99 times 10 to the 9th carlone. Charge 2? Uh, negative 3 times 7. Divided by? Uh, 17. The same number, so 0 0.35 divided by Actually, uh, what did you get? 102.743. I'd actually like the two numbers up here separately first because I want to talk about what those mean just briefly. So I'd like the two numbers first. Well, the first one is uh, 256.857. Thank you. And then the other one. So in the end, we end up with 102.743, and this is again in volts. With sig figs, I believe there are only two, so we end up being 1.0 times 10 to the second volts, or 100 volts with two sig figs. So let's talk about what this positive and this negative mean. If we were to take a negative charge and place it infinitely far away from these two charges, and let's say that these two charges are fixed, we're going to take these two charges and we're going to glue them with electrically insulated glue. I don't know. We'll just take them and put them on the board, I guess. And we're going to take this negative charge over here. This positive means that this negative charge class is going to be attracted or repelled from this positive charge. Attracted, right? It's going to, it has positive electric potential energy, and therefore that electric potential energy is going to decrease as it gets closer. But then we have this negative charge class. Is this negative charge going to be attracted or repelled from this negative charge? Repelled. Repelled. But the net is that this negative charge is going to be attracted to both of them, but much, much less than if there were only the one. That's what this means. So we have 100 volts. We could, of course, go through uh, and you'll get an opportunity to do this. We could go through and use this to figure out the change in electric potential energy, and then we could figure out the final velocity. Notice that these two equations actually here are what were used to combine to make this equation right here. So we could have used them together to get to here, but again, we've already done that once, so there was no reason to do that again. We can just use the equation for the electric potential difference between infinitely far away and a point r distance from a point charge, which we have given. Why did he use electron? I could have used a proton. But it, if I used a proton, the net uh, effect would have been what class? If instead of having an electron here, if I talked about having a proton infinitely far away, what would happen to this charge? It would be repelled from this whole thing. So it's just two ways of looking at it.